Hello, welcome to a little look at Nexus 2 today. Now, if you're new to any of my little screencasts or walkthrough, this if you've stumbled across this because you're looking for Nexus stuff, this is not going to be a normal kind of Nexus overview. Uh, I'm a media composer, and so I'm coming at it totally from that perspective. And one of the first things to say about Nexus 2 is that if you want to rewrite the rules of dance music, go somewhere else. It's about reinforcing the rules more than it is about rewriting them. It's about getting an out-of-the-box, instant, authentic sound, I think is the best way I can put it. But I will go through what control you do have, because you do have some control. Uh, I'm going to be talking quite a bit about Omnisphere as well. Omnisphere is the synth that I... is my default synth. Ah, it says default there, as if that implanted the word in my mind. Uh, and that, I know Omnisphere pretty well. I'm okay at, con at editing it and everything else. So in an ideal world, I wouldn't use anything other than Omnisphere. But as I've been using it for a few years, and it's got, yes, it's got 8,000 patches and you can infinite amounts of programming. But I was finding it for certain kinds of sounds. I wasn't quite getting what I wanted from it, uh, particularly a lot of the harder edged, and not even just harder edged, but a lot of the pop, uh, EDM, dubstep, trap all that stuff it somehow didn't quite seem its forte and maybe that is my um ignorance of programming but it see it's i don't it's very hard to describe in words but perhaps we'll play a bit later and uh, you'll agree or not agree and particularly i was getting a lot of requests to do this kind of stuff uh up to date stuff and i tried massive didn't get on with massive at all and i know it can do great stuff and i played the demos for nexus 2 and i thought yeah that actually is it. What have I got here? That's not that patch at all, so I haven't loaded it. That's the trap one. So, it's... Okay, the plus side is the sound. I'll immediately get on with the downside, because I really dislike the browser. It's It seems like it's formed out of the arc, because all you've got are these categories. Arpeggios, Baroque Renaissance... Uh, which is all well and good, uh, but it's very, very basic in its categorization. You've just got AR. That means that it's an arpeggio. Uh... These are all from the core library. They're not the most exciting sounds, a lot of them. Some of them are really good. But essentially, I was interested in the expansions, which are down here, to get a particular genre sound. And that's where I think it really earns its keep. Um... Really, that's it, you know, and I'll go on at some length as to why that's as debilitating as it is. Um, it's a real pain. But nevertheless, um, the sounds, though, I have to say, are absolutely bang on. So here we are in Trap. You can organise things by category or ABC. Uh, so this, uh, it's got a few drum sounds in it as well. These 808s, right away, I'm thinking, well, I've got a million 808s, but there's something instantly radio-friendly about what they do to these sounds, particularly that one. And I'm thinking, do you know what? If I want an 808 kick, I'll probably go to this patch first now, um, rather than mucking around with it myself. Instantly, that sounds completely authentic to me. And shove an arp on it. Uh, I'm right clicking to get rid of a note. You can lengthen it. So you can buckle you've got a, you've got an arp there anyway with up and down and octaves and all that stuff. Um I'll come on to some of the others later. But just whizzing uh this was You know, it just sounds right. <laughs> it's instantly there. Uh, and as I say, I'm a media composer, and that's kind of what I really want. Okay, let's look at these. These are sequences. This is where you really start going, hang on a minute, because you just play one note. I mean, that's a track, right? What I'm 
going to do that's just I should have set this up already I'm going to just set up CC1 so if I do control anything you can see what I'm doing okay I've got CC1 set up <clears throat> here now which for some reason you can't see it when I use the mod wheel but on my avid artist that is now showing CC1 so you've got that simple variation there on a lot of these sequence patches you've got to split just moving the mic so you've got a different sound up the top end but instantly it's exactly the right sound. Now, what you can do here, let's just take that as an example. Okay, so you go into blah, 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 mix, and normally it lands you there, but we need this bit oscillated here. There's only four parts to this patch. There's often more. And again, it doesn't exactly hold your hand. You've just got four elements to this patch, and they're called one, two, three, or four. You don't know what's what. So if I take them off one by one, if you just want that part, you can do it there and you can adjust the level. Uh, that's the bass. That's the snare. So if you don't want that poppy lead thing going on, you can just get rid of it and you can adjust the level uh, and all of that stuff. Um, there we go. Back to our little whiz through here. Uh, what's this? Change mod to CC1. Again, it's a very simple uh, thing they've got there. <sighs> Do you know what I mean? I mean, it does sound right instantly, but it is... Like anything that's a sequence or a construction kit, now you're not composing anymore. Um, but at least you can break down the elements. So if you just wanted the beat for that, um, then you can do that quite easily. And you've got other sounds that will match it, so you can. it's sort of a bit more usable than it first appears. Um, crazy need. You get a load of that stuff in, well, chap and dubstep, I think, and... Typically, you'll just use it for like one note or something, and there'll be a whole load of other patches. And I've always thought, gee, to get a really good dubstep track, you probably need 40 instruments, all with different variations of that stuff. Uh, and you've got a lot of that here. Um, and this is the trap expansion, but it has... Yeah, there is this overlap with dubstep, and there's a few dubstep... Patches. It's good stuff. Should have shown that earlier. If you're going, come on, everything's that, got that reverb. It's a click of a button to turn it off. Oh, that's a better one to show now. Where was I before? So here we are. Here's your mode for legatos and portamentos and all that. Port speed. This is quite like. I like it. The port is done by sort of tempo. Quarter note, eighth note. That's pretty good. That's pretty easy to use and usable. I like that. Um, what's this? A few. There you go. Okay, so that's a useful riser patch, isn't it? But how am I ever going to find that? You know, it's... FX engine trap. You know, what, what would I type in? There's a search thing here. The search for riser. And that's all I get coming back. I don't get that in Omnisphere. I want a riser. Riser. Boom. Great loads of stuff's coming in from... I've got a few expansion libraries as well. Uh, from all over the place. Uh, rise might be even better word to choose. Because it's got tags, look at this. There's all sorts of stuff. Maybe not everything's a riser because there's other words coming in. But immediately it starts breaking it down. And if I want, you know, a lead riser, you subdivide it. And there you go there. If you want polyphonic, you go there. And so on. It's got It's got all these tags in it. So... There we are. This one is tagged with all of these characteristics and it's searching for all of these words as well. So if you're finding stuff in a hurry, Omnisphere is brilliant. And honestly, the browser in Nexus 2 is terrible. It's just, it's it's out of the arc and it really needs to be 
you're paying money for all these expansions and everything else. They need to go through absolutely everything, in my view, and tag browse the lot and have that as Nexus 3 or something because <sighs> it ain't good enough. I mean, at least you can you can do this, I say, by category and you can look in different things, but it still is incredibly cumbersome. If you're a composer working in a hurry, as I am always working in a hurry, I never, I'm never not working in a hurry, uh, that's really the weakest part of Nexus for me. Where was I? I was just going through things that are kind of fun. For that instant, you know, you want a bit of trap over your track. So these are ARPs, these ones. These aren't the full sequences like this. So at the top there, you've got this kind of line. Thing. And that's what you've got at the bottom there. Um, but the ARPs are kind of, they're just... Oh, sorry, not ARPs. I was talking about ARPs, was I? Or was I? Yes, I was. The ARPs just give you the ARP part of it, which is useful for just having a little bit of that in a track. What's next level? I've written a few down here that I thought they're kind of fun. Uh, next level. Again, that's split top bottom. Very often they're split with just a melodic patch at the top, and sometimes they're ARPs like that. It's, you know... But if you're just doing an underscore for something, do you really need much more than that? It's, and as we come on to the orchestral stuff in a minute, you'll hear they've got exactly the same principle, and it's kind of terrifying. Uh, just a couple more from here. Uh, those are... Again, they're just instant, authentic sounds. I think the ears of the guys who do this, Reflex, are amazing. Whatever they turn to, they kind of nail it, I think. So in amongst all that flashy stuff, you've got perfectly playable stuff in there too. Of whatever style... Whatever style it is you're trying to do. Uh... all good this one this is a different expansion so that's me going down I'm sort of playing that you can't see a keyboard on this so it's a shame you can't see what I'm doing but let's change it back to category That's a great kick, my word. That's a great kick. Again, of a of a genre, hands up electro. I can't even remember what the second part of that is. This is the dubstep one I got. Let's go to the inevitable wobbles because um, here's the problem. It's because you're a bit limited in the architecture of it. They've had to do this wobble thing where you want to change the speed. Uh, let's go, let's take that one, for example. Great. And so you want to change the speed, and you've just got these intervals. You see it says eighths to sixteenths, and you change CC1. So, but that's it. That's the only control you've got. You can't go, well, hold on, I want to have it going faster or slower on that one patch. You can change another patch, but you're limited to that range because it seems that the architecture of the synth doesn't allow it in software. You do have a certain amount of control in software. Uh, that's a delay here. You've got, let's just pick a normal lead patch. Yeah, uh, 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 dub lead. So, you know, you've got the basic control of ADSR. Oh, it's this filter mod, isn't it? Sorry, filter. Um, got your resonance, you've got your... Kind of. So that's a basic filter, how much the envelope affects it. So you've got that. Um, a master filter as well. 
Again, I'm I'm still new to it. I'm not sure if that's just controlling certain because it's made up of lots of different elements. A patch. I don't know if that's just affecting some and it's affecting all of it. I should know that. And you can change the kind of filter it is there. And the slope. You've got the delay. It says it's on. You've got reverb. You've got basic ADSR. Um, spike. Sort of a transient thing that's quite handy. Doing things to your stereo. Um, let's pick a pad a moment, show you next bit. PD. Yeah, do you know. Mm, what else you got? Okay. Here's the trance gate. I love the trance gate. And you've got stereo. If you right click, it gets rid of a note. If you can hear that in stereo, you hear what it's doing. It's very quick and easy to get that effect. Um, or you can just use a basic mono one. You know, knock yourself out. Um, that's a load of rubbish. Uh, that's the mixer. And you... <sighs> Some of these, are, I've, I've skipped the mod, haven't I? There's a lot of control you can do here, actually, that um, with LFOs. See, that's why I thought I was a bit disappointed with the dubstep wobbles, thinking, no, oh, it's got this LFO control, and it's got a certain amount of matrixing, which I haven't really got into yet. But certainly on the presets, they don't make use of that. So you've got these, you know, there's some, there is a reasonable amount of control for the basics. For the basics, that's just an advert. That's some overall stuff, tuning and voices and blah, 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 blah. Um, there you go. So I've got a bunch of expansions. They were all in this Christmas sale. I thought I'm going to get it all together. Um, so now for the media sorts um, who are interested in the Hollywood 2 series, as I was, I thought, wow, you know, they've got some amazing sound here. What's it actually like? Well, all I've got here is the core. There's four parts and they go into the individual instruments and sections uh, at more length in those this is broad stuff and it's really more about sequences and big tooty things uh, and you've got some you've still got some arps in here some sort of electron a couple of bass which isn't really worth bothering with so this is the full orchestra uh hits coming in here which are round robin Oh yeah, up the top we've got this kind of brassy lead thing. Now I don't know about you, but that's more of an effect you'd actually use in a pop or a you know hip hop type track than that doesn't really convince me, I have to say, and I don't think Hits Two did either. Um... So you're probably going, oh crikey! If you're uh, if you've got big orchestral libraries, this isn't really going to hold much of a candle to them. The one thing I would say is that although yeah, there's no legato and blah 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 blah, is that the overall tone it ain't too shabby. Um, this was actually pretty good. This one. I thought. And if you've got, I love using multis and symphobia and having them in a template if I need to do something quick. There's a few here that are kind of. You know, that's, you know, that's, that's okay. And for fun, where is it? I've got symphobia here, right? Uh, multis. Action. There's this great patch called Judge Chambers here. Um, and it's sort of the same kind of idea. Only using sort of better core samples, but I thought, ooh, what happens if I put the two together? Uh, I think I might have to take that relatively down in level. Ah. <laughs> You know, I'm just, you know, I never know what to play when these 
demos. Um, but it's a, it's a fun big noise. And, you know, that one patch in particular, I thought that's pretty good. The Staccato 80 players. Was that okay? I'm just trying to remember. Actually, it's another thing. It's not a sample engine in the same way as we used to in contact. So that's like half a gig. More than half a gig in this case. <laughs> Um, it's a bit sort of soft edged that somehow um, and in contact you'd be able to stream from disc and you'd be able to run it much more efficiently you don't really get that in this engine okay so I've, I've focused quite a bit on the negative but there is some good stuff in here um, the not a lot wrong with that really um, various organ things this one I was quite partial to. It's a sound I don't have. Um, this is like several harps playing together. And you get a sense there, this is what Nexus is about. They get this kind of big sound that's pretty authentic, really. It might be lacking in um, a bit of refinement. Nice combo there. Piano, harp, pits, manets. I'd want to sort of put some early reflections on that, push it back a bit. Um, oh, that's a yeah, crap, it's a ridiculous piano. I've got loads of pianos in there. Um, yeah, let's skip them. It's here though, the sequences that you go. Oh my goodness, epic battle, right? Um, on the mod wheel, got a bit more of a variation there. The top end doesn't change much. So I'm playing the, you know, I'm playing the some kind of hack melody with the top end going through those chords there and I heard that and thought <laughs> it's good for, I mean it's great fun it sounds a lot of them are in that kind of very modern trailer style some of them are more electronic oops I'll just open the same one again changing CC1 there Um, but you know what I thought I kind of thought if you're a video editor or if you're kind of if you're doing stuff where things that whole shows are in and out of door in the day in a day and there's you just need a bit of filler for something and you because you can't go anywhere with that stuff I mean it sounds incredible it sounds brilliant you know full play to them for the sound but apart from you know whizzing around there um, with some basic chords which depending on what patch you're playing. That one's okay. Uh, what's this mystical one? Right, that one, see, that's got a... Um, that's got a harmonic progression in it, and then, of course, you're much more limited in what you do with that, which is tying you into a harmonic structure. Um, now, again, you can go into the mixer here. And here we've got, oh, we've got those elements in it. What do they all do? Who knows? So turn them all off and go through them one by one. So that's a harmonic element. That's just a note. What's seven doing that? Sort of a pitsy thing. That. Another pizzicato element. So, you know, you can take out that harmonic progression. Okay. 
and you know that's more usable perhaps but yeah, i was saying about video editors i've got distracted but yeah if you're doing that and you're just doing stuff that you need to just get something that fills a hole for five ten seconds quickly and i will say this about it it's quite good for you know i'll not c minor again for heaven's sake and if you finished and you release it, and wherever you release it, it's clean. It never sounds like it's a loop that's stopping. So, you know, you can hear how, you know what, if you want something quick and easy, exactly the same as with the trap expansion or any of those, you can just press a note and you go, yeah, that sounds like the authentic thing. Um, and so for most, like a lot of composers would just be horrified, really. And I'm slightly horrified because it does sound really good um, don't kid yourself you're a trailer composer if you've got this because you won't be able to go anywhere with this stuff beyond so let's change CC1 again here and see what happens that's a useful thing but when you start see this business about dropping in elements in and out you can't do that over key switches as far as I know or anything like that you kind of you'd have to start loading loads of instances and it would get really ugly That synth bass is sounding a bit heavy to me there. Look, Ma, no hands or one finger. What do you do now? Oh, you've upped the tension a bit. I'm laughing, but it, it sounds really good. That's the thing. It sounds really good. But, 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 you know, what's a bl oh, I'm still loading it. I do. Everything just ends up, it sort of ends up sounding the same because, it, because you, it sort of forces you into these harmonic progressions very often. It's another minor one. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. There's some sort of element that you can put into a track quite happily. And so, you know, the dropping in and out layers and doing that, it's, it is useful stuff. I don't want to rubbish the library by any means. It, there is stuff that's useful for anyone. If it's a way you want to work, that's another matter. Um, and it's certainly very interesting from the point of view of those who aren't really composers, but want to slap something out that sounds makes people go, hey, wow, that sounds great. You see on there, it's got a sort of a, a default tempo, but it tempo stretches really well. So that's 140 now. Let's put this on here so you can see what I'm doing. Um, but if I play it at 100, it still sounds okay. That one actually, the brass is sounding a bit fake there, isn't it? Responds instantly to tempo. You get the idea. Tron epicness. It is shameless, isn't it? World of Signs. These are quite nice. Got a bunch of variations on that. I mean, a bit craft worky about that, don't you think? Um, where was it? This one. Really nice, actually. It's not necessarily the most authentic string sound, but listen to the bottom end here. This patch is doing what a lot of patch does. I, I think that's a great sound, I have to say. Um, it's doing what a lot of these patches do. That it's this reverse logic on the mod wheel that you push it up and it gets quieter. Now, if you're a composer that uses regular libraries, that's going to drive you nuts. Here's the tip. You just change all these pluses. 
to minuses. Wherever you see any action on a mod wheel, change the plus to the minus, and that will flip it round. Now other elements coming in there. Bit of low grunt, I like that. Um, suspense, yeah, this was... Mm. It's pretty good, but then suddenly you are aware that it's sounding really lifeless in there. I don't know about the loop points or if it's, you know, it's not bad. Zimmer strings come on. I know you want to hear what they've done with Zimmer strings. Yeah. Um, and these, a lot of these hybrid ones, kind of synths, are actually quite nice. They're perfectly usable. There we go. That's going to keep some people happy. Some voices. Yeah, it's not. It's more synthy than it is real, isn't it? Really sound like they're from hell to me, I have to say. And they've oversold the name of that one. Again, synthetic, synthetic. Obligato. <laughs> you know, used in the right way. It's fine. So, got flutes in there on the mod wheel. If you've got, look, here's the thing. If you've got, if you're a composer that uses a lot of sample libraries and you've got stuff like Lass or Project Sam or Spitfire or all those things, for like standard orchestral instruments, this isn't really going to be a productive way to go for you because you can do a whole lot better with those. However, if you're approaching it in a different way or coming from a different place, you can get a lot of bang for your buck. And if, particularly if you own Nexus, there's some real sort of guilty pleasures in here. There's some stuff that will, you know, that you'll be able to strip things down and use them. You'll get you'll get use and value out of it, there's no doubt. But if you're expecting something that rivals Project Sam on its own terms, uh, not really. But I will remind you, you know, that, that where was it? That or the full orchestra. Uh, 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 uh. This one, there is the occasional patch that you go, no, that actually holds up. That's pretty good. And this isn't this one isn't even down as round robin. You know, this one I thought it sounded um great really. Well okay, it's <laughs> for a quick hit, it's good. You might not want to rely over much on repetition in there, because then you do get that machine gun effect. I'll just finish on this one as well. This is the full Monty. Uh, fortunately, the mod wheel goes the right way on this. Bottom end. That's it's okay, you know. It's not as good as better than life and symphobia, but it's it's not terrible. It's certainly not terrible. Do you want to use it in practice with everything else? I don't know. It's up to you. Well, I'll be just giving you an an overview. I think it really, really excels at um at particular genre stuff. 
uh, where it absolutely just, to me, it just nails stuff. Uh, I'm just randomly clicking patches there. These are all ARPs, so they might pre-bake you too much. Oh, this is the ARP patch. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, this is only ARPs here. All the rest of the stuff is in this one. That's the other thing. You can't even see it. It says ARPs. I mean, I know you can change the... It's hopeless, really. Um... Again, really good drums there. Uh, what's huge effects? Wow. 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 Yeah. Um, yeah, I haven't really sort of picked out any particular patches. <laughs> So there you go, you can you can actually change. So you can't, you know, you, you've got, it's not just, oh, you see, for for getting a sound right, for getting a genre sound right, for getting a, you know, a um, EDM, it's great. They're pretty sharp at keeping things updated when a new sound comes along. Some, they'll produce a patch for it in no time. Um, and so really, I ultimately, despite all my criticisms of it, and I have many, I'm super glad I got it because in terms of just tonal stuff in particular genres, I think it's a great counterbalance to this. Omnisphere will remain my bread and butter. It is the thing I love. The A channel, this is only monotimbral. There's the browser, the, the, the way that the editing works by zooming in on a modulation, so, you know, the the whole logical way that's set out and the huge variety in sound and manipulation. Um, it just walks all over Nexus 2, make absolutely no bones about that. But somehow in terms of the core sound, the core synthesis in particular areas, I was just I was just missing something. And Nexus will fill that gap for me. So there we are, a few orchestral fun things as well. That's my perspective on Nexus 2. Yours will differ. Thanks very much. See you on the next one.